Hello, how's it going? What's going on? Welcome back to my channel. Today is going to be the very first reading vlog of 2020. I really wanted to say 2019 right there and I had to stop myself. It's 2020 now. For the first reading vlog of 2020, I'm gonna be doing Dr. Sleep by Stephen King. My lovely friend Winter gifted me this book for Christmas and it could not be more perfectly timed that she just gave me this book because I was literally going to go out and purchase this book for myself this month. So kudos to Winter for really like knowing me. Yeah, I'm just really, really excited to jump into this book. I just finished my current read which was actually my first read of 2019, Little Secrets. And it was actually really good. Like for the first time in I don't even know how many years, I actually enjoyed the first book that I picked up. It's totally crazy. But now I'm going to jump into Dr. Sleep. And I'm really excited because I have made it somewhat of a goal for myself to try to vlog every time I read a new Stephen King book. And I want to continue that tradition in 2020 because I just think it's so much fun to read the classic Stephen King and react to it for the first time. And I know that this one's technically not like classic, I guess, because this one is a more recent release compared to the other ones that I've been reading. I guess this one just published in 2013, it looks like. So again, this one's not like super like Stephen King classic or anything, but Dr. Sleep is a book that I've really been wanting to read for a long time because The Shining is one of my favorite things in the world. Like I will admit, I like The Shining movie more than I like the book, but I think that's due to the fact that I saw the movie long before I read the book. And then when I read the book, I just didn't get the same feeling as I did from the movie, but I still did really enjoy The Shining, the book. And this is the sequel to The Shining. And so I've just always been super curious about this book. And I know that some people really, really love this book. And this book just got a movie adaptation in the fall last year. And it came out around October and I never got the chance to see it in theaters. But I just have a gut feeling that I'm gonna love that movie so freaking much. So I really, really would like to read the book before I see the movie adaptation. So, you know, the most exciting thing too about this is that I know that this book follows Danny Torrance, which was the kid in The Shining. But besides that, I literally have no idea what this book is even about. So I think it'll be really fun to just try and figure out what the hell this book is even about, you know? I'm gonna start reading this tonight. Right now it's about 11 o'clock at night on January 3rd. And I have the day off of work tomorrow somehow because tomorrow's Saturday. And so instead of going out and being social like a normal human creature, I'm going to stay in bed all day and read Dr. Sleep because this book is like 500 something pages. So it's pretty massive. I mean, not as massive as other Stephen Kings, but still pretty thick, you know? Um, earlier tonight, I went to Barnes & Noble because I was looking for a book and they didn't have it, but I ended up getting one of their, um, Cheesecake Factory chocolate muffins. And so I'm gonna, um, eat this while I start Dr. Sleep. And I'm really excited about it. It's not morning. It's two o'clock in the afternoon. And last night I got 62 pages into Dr. Sleep. Last night was actually a really late night for me. I stayed up reading Dr. Sleep until about like 1.15 in the morning. And then I tried to fall asleep and I couldn't fall asleep until like 3.30 in the morning. So yeah, I ended up sleeping in a little bit later than I intended to. And I just went out and got some food. And now I'm back and it's two o'clock already. So. I think this book is okay so far like it's taking me a minute to get into this and even though I do like the fact because like I know with Stephen King books it usually does take me a bit to get into the story before I get hooked but I thought with this one it might be different since I already am familiar with these characters because it's following Danny Torrance you know I don't know like the beginning was very interesting because it's kind of recapping some of his childhood and like in the events that followed at the end of The Shining like with everything that happened so that was really interesting to read about and then his little first section in this book as like an adult 
was interesting to see that he's kind of like it seems like he's almost following in his father's footsteps with his like alcoholism that's kind of interesting to read about and to know but the part of this book that i'm afraid that i'm not gonna like is that section about the true knot or whatever it is that they're called yeah so there's this group of people that's kind of like a cult i guess called the true knot i don't know like i don't really even understand like what they are and like what they're doing like i don't know they're like supernatural or something i guess so i'm hoping that this doesn't turn into something that's kind of more like fantasy and something that goes like way over my head like i really do hope that this is more horror than like fantasy but because this book is talking specifically about danny's ability to shine like i don't really know what to expect with this honestly so i will say and it's i'm off to a very slow start with this one like it took me a lot longer to read those 60 pages last night than i thought it would but i'm hoping to get a reasonable chunk of this done today because it is two o'clock in the afternoon right now and i'm gonna start reading right now but I'm on call night for work tonight, but there's a very high chance that I'm going to get called in because somebody else called out. So I'm kind of expecting to go into work these next in these next couple of hours. I'm going to try to read as much of this as I can before I do probably eventually get called into work. <laughs> about 4 40 in the afternoon right now and i just got to part two that puts me at page 197 i'm glad that i've got to at least a 200 page mark in this book but i still feel like it's building towards the things that are going to happen in this book and so i feel like this book has definitely had one of the slowest starts for me out of all of the stephen king books because i feel like in the beginning of this it's a lot of us learning about Danny's alcohol problems and about him like struggling to overcome those and like thinking back about his life at the Overlook Hotel and like while that's all fine like I like The Shining it's one of my favorite things ever but like I just want to read about this story and read about the new things you know and and I honestly couldn't care less about this true not group like I just don't really care and I'm like skimming their chapters trying to figure out like what the point of it is but I know that it's obviously like it's all gonna connect and they're all related but I am very interested in the chapters about Abra which is like this little girl that has all these like supernatural abilities and she's kind of like communicating with Danny through like her shining abilities or whatever she's probably like the human with like the most shining out of any human maybe so i am really enjoying her like the chapters that are about her but we are pretty much 200 pages into this book and i feel like not a whole lot has happened yet and i mean i know this book is 500 pages so i haven't really gotten to the majority of the story yet but i am interested to continue reading just because i'm interested in abra's story like and to be honest it's weird because i thought i would love this book because of danny torrance like i thought his character is someone that i would really resonate with but to be honest with you i'm feeling like his character is just okay to me like i don't know his chapters are just kind of boring to be honest because he's just talking about his alcohol problems and how he's working in hospice and how his life is just kind of sad and boring and honestly like it's just I don't know but i am interested in abra's chapters like that's pretty much the only thing that's keeping me reading at this point so let's hope it gets interesting and that she and danny are gonna meet at some point or cross paths or interact in some way so far i've been lucky enough that i haven't gotten called into work yet so i'm just gonna continue reading until i do or do not get called into work i have to call in at 6 30 to see if they need me so we'll see i'm gonna continue reading until that happens <laughs> seven o'clock i did not get called into work which is crazy because i was genuinely expecting to get called into work so that was actually pretty awesome i just got to part three of dr sleep and i am now on page 339 i feel like i have read quite a bit this afternoon i've read this much and then i only have 
this much left so i am more than halfway through it and i only have i have a little less than 200 pages left of this i kind of need a break from this book right now i've been reading since page 60 so and i've been reading since two o'clock this afternoon so it has taken me a lot longer to get through some of this book than i thought it would but so far i still feel like the story is like okay like i'm not super super invested in it i finally figured out what the whole like steam thing is that they keep talking about and i think that that's pretty interesting i mean i still like this story because i do like the idea of the shining and i like that we finally get to explore more of the shining and what that is and how it makes danny different from other people and and then knowing that there's so many people out there that also experience the shining like it's really interesting and i do like that um i just realized that abra's character she kind of reminds me of like 11 from stranger things because of the way she's able to like use objects and like read people's minds and just she's very like smart and clever like the way 11 is but i feel like because since she's a little girl like she doesn't know the full potential of her abilities and she's like afraid to hurt people kind of like not that eleven is also like that but dan torrance is okay as an adult character i think he was like a little bit more interesting in the shining but i think the thing i loved so much about the shining was jack torrance's character was very interesting to read about and i really loved reading about the overlook hotel like i loved the idea of like this haunted cursed hotel and it was like really creepy but in this book, it's more just like an exploration of Danny's shining abilities, which is fine. It just feels a little bit more like fantasy-like and like supernatural and paranormal-like than horror-like, you know what I mean? So it's fine. It's it's good. I mean, if the story continues at this rate, it's probably going to end up being like a 3.5 out of 5 for me. Like, it's good, and I acknowledge that it's good. It's just not super like great and exciting and what I thought, I guess, from this. I do want to finish reading this, but right now I'm going to take a break because I've been reading for like five hours straight and I'm tired. Hello, it is January 5th and it is the next morning and I'm currently on break at work right now, but I brought Dr. Sleep with me, so hopefully I can get some reading in right now while I'm on break, but who knows because my coworkers are distracting and um, yeah, we'll see, but I'm going to try to read right now. And then maybe read some more tonight, but I don't know because the Golden Globes are on tonight, so that's kind of a priority. This character is 11. Wait, like, when the name's 11? Yeah. They're literally having her sit in a room, and she has to, like, imagine herself in the thing with them, but she has to have her physical body there. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. That's true. So Stranger Things just stole from it. They literally just took it. Because it's a little girl. It's a 12-year-old girl. She has the shiny. I know, it's going to be lit. It's going to be like Stranger Things. The little girl's like, like Twilight? And he's like, no, not like Twilight. Like a vampire? Yeah. Did you just reference Twilight? Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know there were rules. It's just so fun. It's weird, right? Right. Because I'm cold. Why am I being attacked? <laughs> I forgot! <laughs> well, it's like clothes. Like, how am I supposed to wrap that? You can wrap clothes. Yeah, your pants look too Yeah, why would you do that? <laughs> Waste of time. It's already wrapped. <laughs> we just finished watching the Golden Globes, and it's like 12.30 in the morning now. I am on page 374 of Doctor Sleep, and I don't know if I'm going to read anything tonight or if I'm just going to, like, go to bed because... It's kind of late. This book is reminding me more and more of like Stranger Things kind of, but like not as good as Stranger Things. But like some of the things happening in this book right now totally remind me of Stranger Things. I mean, maybe it's just the character Abra. It reminds me so much of the character Eleven. And then in my mind, I keep being like, this book is stealing from Stranger Things. But then I keep remembering that this book came out in 2013 and Stranger Things didn't come out until 
after that. So then in my brain, I'm like, no, like this was the original and this feels very similar to Stranger Things. So I know that people say that Stranger Things is inspired by Stephen King and like, yeah, that couldn't be more obvious to me after reading this book. It's like Abra's character is like literally 11. It's raining so much today. Who always kept me guessing. And here, she has surprised me one more time. Good morning. It's January 6th, and last night I actually did read a little bit of Dr. Sleep before I went to bed, and I got to page 443, so I only have 80 pages left, planning on finishing it this morning. <laughs> finished Dr. Sleep and ooh, I'm uh, really sad to say that I did not enjoy this one. I'm super bummed about this though because I really thought I would enjoy this book because of the fact that we're following characters that I already know and love from The Shining but I feel like Dan Torrance as an adult is just very dull and very uninteresting. I respect the fact that I know that this book is a lot about Danny's alcoholism and about how he's trying not to follow the same path as his father and I did appreciate that kind of storyline and that kind of story arc that was happening in this book but at the same time I just feel like this story was so uninteresting which is shocking to me but I think I did realize something about my reading taste in particular is that I don't like reading about cults like I just think that they're very uninteresting to read about and especially this cult in particular like if they felt like kind of like vampires or like I don't know like something like lame like I just don't like not that there's anything wrong with reading about vampires but they just don't really interest me necessarily so I feel like that was my major issue with this book is I did not give a shit about the true knot and so much of this book was told from their point of view and it was about the cult and I do feel like the end of this book was Ugh, it was such a hot mess like it honestly kind of reminded me of the ending of imaginary friend where it's just like literally a hot mess and you can't even tell what's happening and it's just a lot of like i feel like it was so much of abra and the leader of the cult just being like you're a coward no you're a coward no you're a coward and like pointing fingers at each other but then nothing really happens like there's little to no action and there's so much build up towards abra meeting the cult you know and like literally this entire book is like her traveling to meet them and like the build-up just didn't even pay off like it was just very boring at the end of the day and yeah it's almost kind of like i want to like compare this to twilight when like the vultury are like coming and then they're all like freaking out and like it's kind of the same thing as twilight where like i never felt threatened by the vultury for some reason like it was always too cheesy and i just couldn't get on board with like them being scary and then I felt the same way about the true knot in this. Like, I just didn't feel threatened by them. Like, they weren't scary to me, so I just didn't care. Like, I know they did some awful things to that little boy, but that's about it, honestly. Like, I just didn't, I don't know. I just didn't really care. And I'm sad because I didn't super care about Dan or Abra as characters. Like, they were interesting, I guess. But, like, like Abra reminded me a lot of Eleven from Stranger Things at times. But overall, I just didn't really care about the story because I didn't care what ended up happening to Danny or Abra by the end. Like, I just didn't care. And that makes me sad that this is probably my least favorite Stephen King that I've read so far. Like, this is probably like a 2 or 2.5 out of 5 stars. But The Shining is just a thousand times better and I feel like The Shining didn't really need a sequel. Like, I do appreciate learning what ended up happening to Dan Danny's character. But at the same time, like, this was a really unnecessary sequel, I feel like. I don't know. I'm major bummed about this one, and hopefully my next Stephen King reading vlog that I do will be more successful. And I'm really sorry, like, I hate to be really negative, especially in, like, a reading vlog. Like, these are intended to be more, like, fun and lighthearted, but I just really didn't enjoy this book. And I don't even really know how to explain what I didn't like about this book so much. I was just super bored and uninterested, and I felt like all of these characters were just really dull. That is all of my thoughts on Dr. Sleep, and if this is a book that you really enjoyed, then please let me know, like, what is it about this book that you really enjoyed? Because I'm actually really curious to know because 
I just personally found it to be very boring and slow, but if you thought it was a really great book, then please let me know what you loved about it because I'm always open to hear more thoughts and maybe you guys can convince me and like let me know why it's so great if you think it's great because I just don't get it, honestly, and I'm sad because I wanted to love this book. Oh, I will still continue to do Stephen King reading vlogs. Like this doesn't sway me from not doing them or anything, but it sucks when you read a 500 page book and you don't even like it. Like, I'm surprised I was able to read it as quickly as I did for not really enjoying it. So hopefully the next Stephen King reading vlog goes better. I have heard from people that his newer stuff isn't as good as his old classic horror stuff, which I'm definitely seeing with how many books of his that I'm reading. I think I'm definitely enjoying the older classic horror stuff better because like Pet Cemetery is still my favorite and I loved it. I loved The Shining and Misery was okay, but I still liked it better than this. So maybe I will have to go back into more of his like old classic horrors again, you know? Thank you guys so much for watching as always, and I will see you guys soon with a new video. Bye.